While on the lookout for new flavors, Malaysia has always amazed me. You will be too. Stick around. I'm Thomas Robson. This is Entree to Asia. I've been to Southeast Asia many times, and when I come back home, my friends invariably ask me, how was my holiday? Holiday? Listen, it's a lot of fun, but when I'm over here, it's a lot of hard work too. There's so much to be done. There's watching people cook, tasting new foods. Now there's a surprise. Taking notes, inspecting markets. It's a hard life, but somebody's got to do it. And besides, I learned so much about cooking. For instance, in Kuala Lumpur, we met a Malay chef who put together a classic a dish from scratch. And believe me, I took notes. Well, so many five-star hotels are regarded as places to eat fine European food. But let's keep things in mind here. We're in Kuala Lumpur. The kitchen staff are mostly Malay. And we have an opportunity to work with Chef Redwan today, who's going to present to us a traditional dish, Penang Laksa. Laksa being a kind of coconut curry, a fish curry, in fact that we're going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any noodles involved? Yeah. Going to some noodles. The noodles, yeah. Beautiful. Well, please, uh, let's see how uh, Penang laksa is prepared. OK. So we're going to use a uh, small mackerel fish. We can use even like uh, big mackerel, red snapper. We can use it. Mackerel or snapper is a mm -hmm. good start. Yeah. Uh, so we have to boil it first. The hot boiled water, put salt inside. Okay, boiling water, salt. Good plan. So in go these beautiful mackerel. The more you put the uh, fish inside, the more the flavor of the laksa tastes better. So we need a good, strong fish flavor from this. And you mentioned earlier that uh, we could use snapper just as easily as, uh, as mackerel. Uh -huh. We're going to boil it until uh, the flesh of the fish becomes more soft because we're going to blend it. Okay. Strain the cooked mackerel from the, uh, from the boiling water. Keep this water for fish stock. This will be our stock then. Uh -huh. Great. All right, so now here's the sauce component that we're concerned about. Heat up the oil. Start with a nice big pot, heat up some oil. Enough to cover the bottom. Yeah. Ground shallot onion, finely chopped shallot onion. Rice shrimp. And this is the uh, balachan, or the shrimp paste, so typical to Malay, Peranakan, and Thai cooking. I'd love to be able to work at a station like this all day long. Nice, the right height for the uh, heat. Will Lots of heat. Fish stock. OK, so about two cups at a time of fish stock. And this is just the salted water mm -hmm. uh, used for cooking the mackerel. It is sliced onion. Sliced white onion. This is a slice of tamarind fruit. And normally we only see the small pods, but it grows to quite a large size. It's sliced and then dried. Very, very sour. So you buy this dry and then soak it, right? Yeah, we soak it. Very sour. And uh, once it's dried, the flavor changes quite a bit from, say, uh, from, say tamarind paste or tamarind concentrate. It becomes more soury, the taste. 
Nice. Kassong leaf. Can you say that again, please? Kassong leaf. Kassong leaf. Now, until now, this is something uh, that was unknown to me. It's got a wonderful flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know of any other cuisines that use kassong leaf? Uh, okay. So we use uh, in Malacca cuisine. Okay. Uh, like asam pedas. Yes. This is a lot of down uh, kassong also. So it's quite popular throughout Malaysia. Uh -huh. Kassong because, leaf. Because of the smell. It smells very nice. Uh -huh. The smell reminds you of everything tropical, and that's uh, that's the nicest part about it, I think. Mm. What's all the lots of flour? These are ginger flowers. Mm. Now that's something that might be a little bit tricky to find at home. I hope we can find those perhaps in a dried state. But we can we can substitute it with like uh, lemongrass. Okay, lemongrass is a good substitute. There we have it. It's important to note that Penang laksa is a soup, a soup served over noodles. It's kind of got a consistency, almost kind of a gravy, but uh, lovely spiciness to it, delicious flavor. Put in the tamarind. Okay, now here's uh, the more common variety of tamarind, the one that's quite easy to find. Usually it's sold in a lump wrapped in plastic, a little package. Add some water. And knead it with your hands. Inside the pot. So washing the juice from the tamarind pulp. Tamarind adds a wonderfully earthy and sour note. And in this case, it'll be quite interesting because we have the mature slices of dry tamarind fruit and now uh, the pulp from the young tamarind fruit, which is a good deal sweeter than the older one. And a different flavor because it's fresh, not dried. The fish not very hot now, so we can take the meat out of the bones. Perfect. This is the part that takes time. Goal here is to uh, leave the bones out of the mix. Just use the fish meat to garnish the soup with. Okay, so now the painstaking process of separating the meat from the bones has been done, but there's another step to follow, and that is carefully mincing the meat into a fine puree. It's a modern age now, so no longer will we chop it with knives laboriously. We'll send it off to a blender and puree it up nice and finely to give the, the laksa a better texture. Yeah. We're going to blend it very finely. So I have to mix it with a little bit of water. Now to get the puree just the right consistency, a little bit of water is added to the fish. Many people have a, a robo culinaire or a cuisinart, as so many people call them. Food processor is the proper term. That's uh, the way you want to finely mince this. And with a modern machine like this, it only takes a moment. Done. What a lovely fine texture. As you can see it's very, really fine. Remember now, this is a traditional dish, so you're not looking for that perfect mousse. Okay, now, let's give some texture to this uh, Penang Laksa. The very finely ground fish meat. Like most dishes with a Peranakan influence, some people might say a Nonya influence, there's quite a bit of preparation 
and labor that goes into perfecting each dish. And I think a laksa is no exception. The grinding of the meat to thicken the sauce is a, a wonderful idea. It takes a little time. Bring the soup back to a lovely warm temperature. And we're almost ready to serve. You can see lovely slices of onion, some of the whole spices, certainly the ginger flowers that have gone in. To make it more, that's better, we put some more chili inside. Well, let's put some chili inside. We put a salt. little bit of salt, of course. Not too many, because the star of the fish. Right, this is the ocean fish has its own natural salt, so we don't want to go too aggressively with the salt. Leave that on a nice medium simmer. And I'm chili guy today. I'm standing here holding the honorary bowl of bright red and green chilies. I have a job to do. How much would you like uh, to put in there? The whole of it. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Carefully <laughs> holding this fiery combination here. Working with traditional equipment. One note that we should make at this point is uh, that when you're pounding chilies, stand well back. And in some cases, some people even use their hands to partially cover the bowl because believe it or not, chili seeds are trained to jump for the eyes. Really, that's not too many chilies, is it? I mean, it's just a couple. Yeah, you should try it. The smallest, uh, the smallest chili is the... The hottest the effect. Hardest, yeah. Yes. If you want to try and approach this kind of flavor at home, instead of using the smallest peppers with the most heat, you might want to consider working with a serrano pepper, a jalapeno pepper, or even a banana pepper, so you get that nice fresh chili flavor without the intense heat. I don't think we're going to worry too much about the heat today, though. Better that we see it authentically, so we know what's going on. Okay, so when we reach a nice coarse texture with the chilies, we scoop them out of the mortar and pestle. And I'd say we have about three quarters of a cup of uh, pounded red and green fresh chili. And they go right into the laksa. Hot la. Yeah, it's very hot la. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ready to be served. It's ready to be served. Let's go. How wonderful. A nice rolling boil to finish the soup off. And there we go. So now it's that time again where we get an opportunity to taste the fruits of a popular chef's labors. We have a little bit of a rice noodle here. Sometimes you might hear of it as long rice or rice pasta. It's a thick, wide rice noodle. A little bit of the laksa gravy. And uh, how do I enjoy all these items on the side? I just garnish at my yeah, uh, Mix it together. Beautiful. I'll start with some cucumber. And this is sour pineapple. And that is something I really love. Chili. Fresh onion. I also love mint. Wow. And again, ginger flowers sliced. And this sauce here? Uh, it's a shrimp paste. It's very, a little bit sweet. Oh, wow. So try here's it. a little bit of the baracha. It's been roasted beforehand? Uh, blended. Blended. With uh, soy sauce. Thick soy sauce? Yes. So thick soy sauce with shrimp paste. What a treat this is going to be. Let me just mix it in a bit here. So first off, just the laksa. And there's a nice green chili grinning up at me right from the spoon. Here we go. Wow. 
nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, chef. Is it spicy? Of course it's spicy, yes, but it's very, very good. Yeah. Just remember, you don't have to pound up so many green chilies. You can use serranos or jalapenos. Mm -hmm. You'll get the flavor, but less heat. However, we're in Kuala Lumpur, and uh, we'll do as the Romans do. What on earth am I doing? Well, I'm making a rempa, or a seasoning paste, for a dish that's not unlike the one that Redwan made for us. Instead of making Penang laksa today, we're gonna make a nice curry and noodle dish with shrimp in it. And I'm making the seasoning paste, and right now I'm pounding Kamiri nuts. Now here are Kamiri nuts, and they're also known as candle nuts. It's important to note that they add a delicious flavor and a rich, thick consistency to a curry dish, but you shouldn't eat them raw. They must be cooked. So keep that in mind if you find some Kamiri nuts. And if you can't find them for making a rempa, well, use macadamia nuts instead. And we all know that those are perfectly fine to eat any time of the day. My rempa is ready to use, but let's have a look at what went into it, shall we? I have some fresh red chilies, some lemongrass, shallot onions, garlic, ginger, galanga root, and turmeric. The last ingredient I added just before the Kimiri nuts was some shrimp paste. And down here in front, I have a couple of examples of shrimp paste, one that's Thai, one that's Malay, and they look quite similar. What I have there is about two teaspoons measured out, and they were pounded in and mixed in to this lovely rempa. Now, let's just gather everything together. I'm going to need a little spatula. And I have one right here. And you see the volume of the rempa here. Well, this really builds up the texture and, of course, adds a great deal of flavor to the curry dish I'm about to make. Let's just move over to the cooking area and have a look at what else we'll need to prepare this dish. I've got a nice, heavy-duty, uh, thick-bottomed pot that'll do the job. I've got some coconut milk, and I have some really nice big prawns. You could use any kind of seafood. A mix of different kinds of seafoods would be really delicious. We'll get the pan going. We'll add a little splash of oil. Several tablespoons full will be enough. I would say, oh, there's two, two and a half tablespoons full. And we'll pick up the old rempa grinder here, and I'm gonna dump all this into the oil so that we can get all the aromatic flavors of the rempa into the oil so that they stay in the dish. This pre-cooking with oil is essential in Southeast Asian cookery. We'll wait for this to sizzle a little bit, and as soon as it starts sizzling and the aroma is really nice and fragrant, in fact, that's already starting now, I'm going to add about two and a half cups of coconut milk. If you take a can of coconut milk, shake it up, you'll have the right rich consistency for a curry dish like this that really takes very little time at all to cook once you've made your seasoning paste, or in this case, the Malay word for that is rempa. So here we go. Just increase the heat, oh, a little bit. And in a moment, we'll add the coconut milk. Here it comes. Oh, that smells delicious. All right, coconut milk. We'll mix it in a little bit at a time. There we are, because we want everything to mix thoroughly and have no lumps. Oh, yes. And we can add the rest now. Already looks like a nice curry. What you can do at this point is simply add a little pinch of salt Oh, about half a teaspoonful and about one teaspoonful of sugar. We want a nice light colored sauce to go over a dish of noodles. As soon as this comes to the boil, I'm going to let it simmer for a moment. That'll mean turning off the heat after it comes to the boil. And then we're going to add some nice plump prawns. And when they're done, this will be ready to serve over noodles. Day 12. Markets such as these had their beginnings centuries ago. And even though few of the popular explorers of the time ever made it as far south as Kuala Lumpur, 
traders of the immediate region did a brisk business. Instead of watches, CDs, software, and food, there were silk, spices, jewelry, and food. There's always food. Markets like this were a crossroads where adventurers and traders alike met and traded both merchandise and stories. Today, a comfortable walk around here any night of the week, and you can still hear stories from all corners of the world. The merchandise may have changed over the centuries, but it seems as though little else has. Okay, now I've changed everything in front of us a bit. I've made room for what's coming up. Our curry has been simmering for a few minutes and it's gotten quite thick and lovely, but we want a soup-like consistency. So the very next step is to add some stock. I have a nice light chicken stock here. We're gonna add, oh, about a cup to two cups. I think that's what we got right there. Perfect. I'll put this down and we'll increase the heat, bring this up to the boil quickly. There is the perfect consistency for our curry sauce for noodles. And now we're going to add in the shrimp, well, the prawns. I shouldn't mix those two up. So here they are, nice big prawns from warm water Thailand going into there. And I'll put my spoon back here and I'll put the lid on just a bit so that those will cook through the proper way. Now we're talking about noodles, so let's come over here to the cooking station where I have some boiling water ready to go for cooking some noodles. Now I'm going to use some wonton noodles today and what a wonton noodle is is it's simply a thin Chinese egg noodle. Here's what they look like when you buy them dry in the store. This is a great way to use them. They take a very short time to boil and I'd like to note do not salt the water when you cook this kind of egg noodle or they become too rubbery and tough. Right here I have a bundle of the fresh egg noodle. You can find those in the refrigerator section of an Asian market and they're becoming very, very popular. And what's good is they're really quick to cook. So let's cook those now. Get the monster chopsticks going and we'll just scoop these into the water and then we'll break them up. Make sure we got a nice high heat going and these won't take a moment to boil. While they'll cook, I want to go back over and check on the shrimp in the other pot, make sure that they're doing very well. And yes, things are coming to the simmer. The shrimp are starting to change color. It's looking oh so good. Perfect. I can hear my noodles cooking. We'll reduce the heat a little bit here and we'll give these a nice stir. Everything's coming along as it should. Our noodles are about done now. These take very little time to cook. And there we have it. I'll turn off the heat. And our noodles will go into our serving bowl. Put the lid on here. Fantastic. And now let's put the curry sauce on top and I'll show you what to serve with this fantastic curry noodle soup. Take off the lid. And we'll scoop out some of these delicious prawns. Here we go. Arrange them on top of the soup. Beautiful. And now some of the broth. Just enough to moisten the noodles. You don't really want everything swimming in soup at this point. There's a typical Malay presentation for delicious noodles. And what you'll want to serve alongside of this delicious curry noodle soup with prawns is some freshly sliced shallot onions, quarters or eighths of lime to squeeze on top, fresh bean sprouts to tuck in along the side and eat along with the soup and noodles and of course for the heat some nice fragrant chili flakes that you can scatter all over the top and there you have it a delicious curry me or Malaysian curry and noodle soup today we've made it with shrimp
Malaysia really does have an amazing variety of curries, each with its own distinct flavor. We'll have more great recipes coming to you next time on Entree to Asia. I'm Thomas Robson. To find out more about Entree to Asia, including recipes and program descriptions, visit our website at www.entretoasia.com.